Welcome to the video, Understanding the A3 Problem Solving Tool. Have you ever wanted to improve an inefficient process, but didn't know where to start? Or have you wondered if there was a simple, one-page tool to guide everyone through the same problem solving process? The A3 Problem Solving Tool can do all this and more. This video will define what the A3 Problem Solving Tool is, how to use it, and show an example. Because improvement projects tend to expand beyond what is manageable, the Japanese developed a very simple method for keeping things focused. They can find the work by the size of the paper, an A3. A3 is a European paper size that you will notice if you pull up paper sizes on any computer program such as Microsoft Word. The closest paper size we have in the United States is 11 by 17. The Japanese settled on this size because it is the largest size you can fax. The idea is that if something cannot fit on one piece of A3 paper, your problem is too big and needs to be broken into smaller chunks. This way, your problem and process stay focused and easy to see at a glance. There are many benefits to using the A3 problem solving tool. It is a one page, short and structured way to organize your thoughts. It also provides accountability, shows others how you have arrived at decisions that you make, engages a variety of staff, helps you think outside the box, and helps you uncover problems you didn't see before, helps you understand why something is happening so you can choose the best solution, and it combines data and personal perspectives. With practice, you too will see the usefulness of this tool. There are multiple forms of A3s. Today we're going to focus on the problem solving tool. When beginning an A3 problem solving tool, there are some key things to know. First, an A3 is a living document and should be updated regularly. This living document should have a title, owner, and date filled out in the top right corner. Next, A3s are best completed with a group of stakeholders. You should never A3 alone. Finally, you should complete one box in the tool at a time before moving on to the next. This sounds easy, but you will find yourself jumping ahead again and again. The A3 problem solving tool has two sides. The left side focuses on the problem and why it is happening. You will spend about 70% of your time on the left side. The right side focuses on the possible solutions and the implementation of those solutions. Over the next few minutes, we will describe the following steps to filling out an A3. Step 1. We start with a description of what is not working, what is broken, bent, or just plain worn out. Step 2. Tell me how broken it is. This usually involves numbers showing how big the problem is and how long it has been going on. Step 3. Show me where it is broken. This is usually a flow chart, spaghetti diagram, or stick figures walking through a process. Step four, show me why it is the way it is. Help me get to the root cause. Step five, show me what it should look like in the future. Step six, show me what solutions we can try to address the root cause and get to the future state. Step seven, Show me the steps we are going to take to implement our solution. Step eight, show me if it worked. What did our solution cost? Was it worth it? And what is our plan for follow-up? Now we're gonna take you through an example. The pig drawing company is the main supplier of pig drawings in the United States. Supervisors at the company received numerous requests for pig drawings from very important customers. To complete the orders, Supervisors ask employees to draw pigs. Then the supervisor reviews the drawings, returns any drawings that do not meet standards, the employee will then fix the drawing, and the supervisor finally submits the qualified drawings to the director. Unfortunately, they have recently received an increased number of complaints about their timeliness and the quality of their work. What is the problem? To create our problem statement, we need to identify the customer, process, and waste in this situation. We need to be careful not to include a cause or solution in our problem statement, or point fingers at a person. 
In this situation, the company stated their problem as, the pig drawing company has low customer satisfaction ratings for their pig renderings, primarily in delivery and quality. The customer is the pig drawing company. The process is pig rendering, or drawings. The waste is poor quality and timeliness. You may have chosen to write the problem statement another way, and that is okay. There is more than one way to write a problem statement. The company identified an additional piece of information about being over budget on staff and inventory costs. As we get further through the A3, if this additional information creates too large of a scope to fit on this particular A3, then we would put the budget and inventory problem on its own form. Next, the pig drawing company needs to provide a little more background information about the problem. This can include data, a timeline of the problem, or whatever information you think is most important to tell the story. In this case, they looked at two pieces of data. First, they looked at the average time it takes every employee to draw a pig. They used two minutes as the goal, which is the national pig drawing benchmark. The good news is that all employees are drawing pigs efficiently. This doesn't look to be part of the problem. Next, they looked at their pig drawing return rate. While no errors are found after a supervisor submits a drawing to the director, 90% of drawings are returned to employees after the first review to be fixed, and it takes all employees three to four rounds to draw a correct pig. Based on this data, they can fill in the background section of the A3. Now that they have their background information, they need to show how the work currently happens and confirm that they have it correct from anyone involved in the process. They can use process maps, spaghetti diagrams, data graphs, Pareto charts, or other quality improvement tools. Here is the current process at the pig drawing company. The top row includes tasks the supervisor completes and the bottom row represents tasks assigned to staff. After mapping out the current process, you should label problem areas and opportunities for improvement. These are called Kaizen bursts. You can either draw or insert the map into the A3. Next we will use the problem statement, our observations, and the Kaizen burst areas of waste and opportunity to identify the root cause of our problem. One way to do this is by using the five whys activity. For the pig drawing company, 90% of drawings are returned on their first attempt. Why are staff making these errors? Potentially staff don't know the customer requirements. Why don't they know the requirements? Because they receive verbal instructions from their supervisor and the instructions are not consistent, making it difficult to comply. Why do they receive verbal instructions? They receive verbal instructions because the instructions are not documented anywhere. Why are they not documented? No one created this instructions or standard work. Why had no one created them? No one knows how to create the standard work. Once the root cause appears clear, actionable, and within your scope, you can move on. When showing what the target state should look like after one improvement cycle, focus on where you want to be in 30 to 90 days. How will you know this improvement cycle was successful? This could include drawing the proposed better way to work, setting improvement targets, or describing what to expect, such as clear understanding of requirements or no rework. Countermeasures are another word for solutions. Your solution should help you move from the current state to the target state and address specific root causes of the problem. You may consider pilot testing a proposed solution before changing a process completely. For example, the pig drawing company may try out new standard work with one group of employees for a defined amount of time to see if the standard work improved the return rate or to get feedback from employees on their experience using the standard work. Any pilot will be listed under rapid experiments on the A3. Once you have decided on your countermeasure and conducted any pilot tests, the completion plan will document the small steps you will take to implement your countermeasure. It is important to include what the specific action items are, who was assigned to perform that action, when the action is to be completed, 
and what the outcome is to know if you are successful or not. Finally, the last couple of sections in the A3 are to document if there was any cost, any benefit, amount of waste eliminated, and a schedule for follow-up in 30, 60, and 90 days to ensure you are seeing the results you wanted. Congratulations! You have now completed your first A3. Keeping all of your work in one place, like an A3, and going through this structured problem-solving process makes it an excellent communication tool to explain why you are changing things and to also document your success. Many people have found this tool useful and we hope you do too. For more resources, examples, and a job aid on how to complete an A3, please visit the website below.